In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we gather on this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time and also on this Father's Day weekend, a very special blessedness and, and goodness and gratitude to all of our fathers and all of those who have been such a powerful part of our lives, both living among us still in this world and those who are deceased. So let us prepare to celebrate the sacred liturgy as we call to mind and acknowledge our sins. Let us open our hearts to God's forgiveness and love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the, the highest, highest, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who you set firm on the foundations of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and petition, and they shall look on him whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. And they shall grieve over him as one grieves for a firstborn. On that day, the mourning in Jerusalem shall be as great as the mourning of Hadadrimmon in the plain of Megiddo. On that day, there shall be open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a fountain to purify from sin and uncleanliness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting, thirsting for, for you, O Lord, Lord my God. God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for you, you O Lord, Lord my God. God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My, my soul, soul is thirsting, thirsting for, for you, O Lord, Lord my God. God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet, my, so shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for, for you, O Lord, Lord my God. God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for you, you O Lord, Lord my God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, through faith you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free person. There is not male and female. For you are all one in Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's children, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they will follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Once when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, the Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must not deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, and whoever lo loses his life for my sake will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so, my friends, once again on this Father's Day, we extend a very warm and blessed and happy greeting to all of our fathers, our stepfathers, our grandfathers, our godfathers, and those who are living among us still and those who we entrust to God's eternal glory. My father died in 1991, but his presence is still very vivid and memory certainly alive and well of a good man. And so for all of you, you would certainly deserve our respect, our appreciation for your care, for your love, and your sacrifice in being good fathers, and all of us becoming those, that goodness in our own lives. I remember growing up in Madison, that uh, just near Hilldale, that my father was a rather frugal man. He was uh, an accountant and um, businessman. And when it came to, I remember with mom buying clothes for us, especially myself and my two brothers, and we're all just uh, about a year apart, is that a lot, for a lot of times that we remember that they would be getting clothes that were a little too big and the shirts and the coats had to roll up the sleeves and the pants were a little longer and to roll up and sometimes um, hem in the, the pants to, and it wasn't that they were just fashion blind, it was recognizing in a very frugal kind of way, being good stewards of buying clothes that we were in the midst of growth spurts and, and being able to let out the cuffs and let out those things as we grow rather than every time you turn around to be able to are uh, having to buy new clothes and, and perhaps a, a shared experience and even to this day. But um, it isn't that goodness that it was always like saying, mm, we always need to provide room to grow. We need room to grow, certainly with clothing. But it is, isn't that true, it's about our whole lives, that we have a need for lots of room to grow from our experiences, from our learnings, from the input of other people, from our joys and successes to our failures and our difficulties, through our mistakes, through good events, whatever it is, that it keeps stretching all of us as we live life to continue to have room to grow, which is a lifetime type of thing, not just when we're young, but I find myself in my tender age delighting to still have things that I need to learn and being able to try on new things and learn from mistakes to maybe hopefully get better at that, but, but again, always having room to grow. So I think of that just as a life lesson and thinking of that how my father and our fathers certainly contribute to that, but also in our faith as we listen to these scriptures and again today, as we listen to Jesus encountering in the midst of prayer, his disciples saying, now, you know, who is it that people say that I am? And then turning directly to these who had spent all this time with him, now who do you say that I am? Probably all of them were rather quiet except for Peter had a moment of revelation in saying that you are the Christ of God. 
and said that Jesus rebuked him. Well, it, it didn't mean that he, you know, put him down for saying that because he was speaking a revelation of truth, but wanted Peter to know that, that there is a different dimension and a fuller dimension for all of us to continue to have room to grow in our understanding of who God is and who we are called to be each and every day. And so it's Jesus stretching that room to grow and challenging it says, you know, yes, I am the Christ of God, the savior of the world in many ways that keeps revealing, but very much a part of that is not just the joyful, good, comforting presence and message, but it also means suffering. And then he says, you know, we're going to Jerusalem and I'm gonna suffer greatly at the hands of, of many people and be put to death and, be, and then lead to resurrection. And a lot of times, isn't it true that people really like Easter and want to just kind of deny Good Friday ever happened? Sometimes we even wonder as, as Catholics why we put the corpus, the body of Christ, on a crucifix and not like many Christian denominations just have a, a plain wood cross. Well, a part of that is a remembrance and leading from Jesus himself about what it took and what Jesus had to take on in the fullness of his humanity to save us, to gain us forgiveness, to transform death into new life. It took him taking on the cross, all that suffering and all of that pain and throughout all of humanity, but also then to redeem it. Having the corpus, the body of Christ on the cross in our churches, in our worship spaces, in our homes, around our necks, many times it is also a reminder that as Jesus said in the gospel, if we're really going to get it and understand about what it means to be a disciple, it means take up your cross every single day and follow me. It means take up your cross, that we are willing to commit ourselves to a life of conversion in light of Jesus Christ and the mandate of the gospel, that we're willing to be able to take on more effectively the responsibility of what it means to live in God's presence and to be witnesses of that presence, to really bring that hope and that goodness, that love, that reconciliation to our world. And so we know very well as Jesus asks each one of us, who do you say that I am? It's one thing to say, Yes, I believe in you, Lord, as Savior. Yes, I believe in you as the Christ. Yes, I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. But it's nothing to really live that, isn't it? Every single day. We all have room to grow in that faith, in that living of faith, in our lives, in our world, in our society. And certainly, we need a lot of room to grow, don't we? When we coming off of the horror experience of, of, the, of the deaths and the murders in Orlando and just a year ago in Charleston, that we have a room to grow to go back to what Paul was talking about in the second reading to the Galatians, that, that we are all one. There's no such thing as divisiveness. There's no such thing as prejudice. There's no such thing as Jew or Greek, slave or free. And we really struggle with that, don't we? Even in our own day and time, and so many of the conflicts and the horrors and the problems in our world have to do with that divisiveness rather than really being able to bring together and to grow in a real spirit of unity and oneness and respect for all of life as it is. And so we all have, as individuals, as societies, huge room to grow. We need some powerful growth spurts in being able to grow the giftedness of the kingdom of God that Jesus established for us and teaches us to move from our selfishness many times, self-centeredness, to selfless service and care of others. And so to more and more embrace the mandate of the gospel, which is all about pure love and reconciliation and inclusion. So we continue to pray and to keep that vision alive and well in our own hearts and our lives in the midst of all the grace God gives us and the room to grow. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, confident of your loving care for us as we strive to follow in the way you guide us, we now offer these petitions. For the church, that we may clearly know what we are called to as followers of Christ and have the courage to live lives faithful to the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis, for Bishop Morlino and all leaders of faith, that they may serve in love those entrusted to their spiritual care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, and godfathers, for all men who serve and nurture young people, for their strength and tenderness, courage and wisdom, generosity and faithfulness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in positions of authority in our land and throughout the world, may they serve and lead with wisdom, justice, understanding, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of horror and violence in Orlando and in communities near and far, for a greater respect for all life and for true peace among all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the elderly, persons with disabilities, the forgotten and the rejected, may they know the love of the Lord and the support and love of all who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Deacon Joseph Baker, who will be ordained to the priesthood for the Diocese of Madison next Friday, for all in formation for the priesthood, consecrated religious life, and professional lay ministry for the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially the intention of this Mass, Leo Hahn, may eternal rest be granted to them and perpetual light shine upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these prayers of your people, Lord. Help us to be true to our commitment to live as your Son, Jesus, taught us. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thanks, guys. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed humankind in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you, you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. If there are people around and near, please minister now the very peace that each of us has received. Peace be with you, Andy. And with your spirit. Thank you. Peace be with you, James. And with your spirit. Thank you. Peace be with you. Thank you, George. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The 
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ, yeah. The body of Christ, yeah. yeah. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass is now ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank the owner, staff, and management of WISC-TV, Channel 3, for their generosity in providing this weekly Mass because of their public service and social concern for, all, for those of all faiths. Our presider this morning was Monsignor Larry Bakke, who is the Director of the Apostolate to the Handicapped for the Diocese of Madison and pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe. Assisting Monsignor Larry as acolytes were James Rausch and George Stowborough of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in Monona, Wisconsin. Our music ministry was provided by our loyal friend of many years, Val Thomas of St. Pius X Parish in Cambridge, Wisconsin. Through closed captioning provided by the Apostolate and the interpretation of Mary Fruits, of St. Dennis Parish in Madison, the deaf were able to share with us in worship. I am Andy Zoller of Good Shepherd Catholic Parish in Madison, and it was an honor to share in this special ministry as your lector and commentator. Most importantly, we thank you for sharing your time with us this morning for the sacred liturgy. Have a beautiful week, and may you always thirst for the love of the Lord in your souls and lives. <laughs>